Hey guys, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and we have a tool today that's going to help you save hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars. What is it, Will? You got to really screw up for thousands of dollars, but it is a practice solder board from uh, iFlight RC. Uh, this is a blitz practice board. It has measurement tools as well as various solder pads of different styles to learn how to practice with or solder with. You just told me everything in the intro, so now I'm not going to watch it. All right, in this video, we're going to show you how to solder, what we use to solder, and how the expert here, the best soldering guy I ever see, he's just us. that bad at it, guys. He's just that bad at it. Should tell us what to do to improve our soldering skills. Well, where can I get a $2 investment? This $2 investment can be found at GraysonHobby.com if you're shopping online, or if you're in the Atlanta, Georgia area, come to Loganville, Georgia, and buy it in store. A little purchase helps, and it's only $2. $2 here is a lot cheaper than $90 for damaging that right there. Well, who is this solder, practice solder board for? Well, without naming names, you, <laughs> this guy right here that soldered this one and sent it back. Um, what? Who said that out loud? Um, no, it's for people that don't know how to solder or don't have the experience to solder, or they're not confident in soldering enough to possibly damage their $100 plus dollar electronics boards. All right, you forgot somebody. You. <laughs> you got two oh. people. Uh, this is also a really good tool if you're into STEM programs. This is a nice little accessory to get kids into soldering. Um, talk to a couple schools personally, locally, that have uh, got into the drone racing, the robotics, etc. Um, and this is a nice little thing where kids can learn how to solder. You can visually see how they're soldering um, before you hand them expensive components to possibly damage because right. they haven't soldered before. And the good thing about this, nothing will catch fire if you solder it wrong. Hey guys, Will Grayson Hobby here. I uh, want to talk about this new product we got in. This is from iFlight. So you guys have seen our prior videos of the Diatone uh, practice solder board. This is kind of like the next step, the next generation of the solder board. So <laughs> the reason we're going over this today is because of something like this. This is a beautiful Amazon return quality solder job by some end user here. Uh, they didn't even get this thing fully soldered before they jacked it up. Um, as you can see, this person needed a practice solder board to learn how to solder. Um, you have bridge solder points everywhere on this thing. This is unfortunately, this is something that would cost you close to $90 nowadays. This is completely destroyed. This is done. This is dead electronics because someone didn't know how to solder and they didn't spend a couple bucks insurance to learn how to solder. Uh, we're gonna open this up and just show you guys real quick. A lot of different things going on, not only on one side, but on the other as well. Um, this just kind of takes the practice board a little more expanded. It has different diameter holes, way more variety of diameter. It has surface mount uh, transistors and diodes and even uh, chips. So basically, if you're looking to try to practice repairing boards or electronics, if you're into robotics, stuff like that, this might even be more practical for you as well. But fixing speed controls and stuff like that, this is the kind of components you might deal with. So this is a great little board to learn how to practice with um, a part because typically if you buy a diode replacement, something like, you know, a transistor, voltage regulator, etc. So where does that go? This particular one's not going to go on this board. I just had one but laying around. But where does around. it like go in here though? How do I... So this is something, if it was the right size, you would, uh, okay. you know, you could put down and learn to solder, but this is a, not size. the right size. Right. Yes. So, oh, go right there on the surface. But it also has your end pins for like motor pads, ESC pads, etc., battery pads, um, through hole soldering. You got a nice centimeter, um, and basically Imperial has a ruler. and metric ruler on it. That's pretty cool. So you can measure the length of the wire, yeah. right? All right, so show us a quick practical example on how to so, solder a small wire. So we're talking, this is an iFlight stack here, but you'll see the solder pads on there. And if, you know, if you've never soldered before, this is not exactly the easiest thing in the world. So we could match this up. This looks like, um, I'm going to say these are probably 1.25-ish. All right, so tell us what you need. So a couple things you're going to need. You're going to need soldering iron. So we, we like to use the secure irons here. Uh, they're under $50. They have a really nice um, power output. You can use up to a six cell LiPo on them. You can also get an external power supply like I'll be using today uh, to use them. The tips are replaceable. They usually cost around $10 for replacement tips. So you can get wide tips, narrow tips, etc. cetera. Um, so that's a good little iron there. You'll also need solder. This is a four ounce solder, uh, 6040 solder. You can use 6337 as well. Um, don't use lead free guys. Lead free is not fun with this stuff. Um, but, uh, we can all, you also have it in half ounce little bundles as well. And this, if you never want to buy solder again, <laughs> is a one pound thing of solder. I have actually gone through this in 
pretty short time with repairs back with the old Eoshin days. <laughs> so, um, but that's not as common. That's one of those one and done purchases. And last but not least, flux. Flux paste, uh, as you can see here, this is well used and really nasty and dirty in there now. Look at that. Um, Explain it's not plumbers. Yeah, it's it's not acid based. This is uh, rosin based flux. So this is something that's going to help the solder stick to the pads and adhere to everything. And it makes soldering a lot easier. Personally, I don't even bother soldering most stuff unless it's really, really small wire without flux. It's right. just... It's a nine day difference. If you don't have some of this, buy some and don't use lead free solder. Use 6040 or 6337 solder and flux. Don't go to Home Depot for that stuff. They don't sell it. They sell the plumber stuff. Yeah, they're, I think the stuff you'll find at like Home Depot and all that, um, unless they've changed, was acid based for yeah. plumbing. So you don't want that because it'll damage the electronics. All right, you got one last tool, which I think is very important. This is, well, I use Wait, pair wire of, cutters, a pair of quality wire cutters. Yeah. Um, and then this is just the strip wire strippers, and this is good for stripping the the silicone jacket of the wires. Right. That one you get at Home Depot. You can also use an X-Acto knife and cut around, but mm -hmm. if you push too hard, you can cut through the wire, etc. So I use those. Um, All right. But yeah. Show so, us the magic, sir, because you do the, some of the best soldering I've ever seen. All right. So take us through. All right. So basically, um, because we're going to simulate soldering like receiver wires on here, this is just some 30, 32 gauge, roughly silicone based wire. Um, so instead of soldering on here, we're going to just solder it on similar pads here. Okay. And I'm going to go with the 1.5 pads because I think that's closer to what we got. The iron does come with a little uh, sponge that you can soak and then clean the tip with, as well as a solder stand. These are just ones I have laying around because honestly, I lost the other one. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do on this one today. And the iron, roughly 300 to 350 degrees Celsius. Um, you can go a little higher if you're good at it, but otherwise you might want to start a little lower. So, um, I'm just going to take my wire strippers, my fancy wire strippers here, and strip back a little bit. And remember, if the pad is only 3 millimeters long, you don't need to strip 6 inches of wire. So... Um, but basically, the first thing I like to do is tin the wire, regardless of the size of it. Um, in this case, uh, we'll use this, but I'm going to put flux. You can do it on a toothpick or something like that works, but I'm just going to get flux on the surfaces. And if you are doing larger wire, this is where you'd probably want to twist the wire up and make it nice and clean. Cause a lot of times I see people just take the wire and push it down. And if it's not twisted, it tends to spread out oh, and yeah. you run the risk of shorting you to another hairs. pad. I call those hairs just kind of. Yeah. All right, so you push the solder iron on the solder. Yeah. Can I get my iron heat up? Okay. Whoops. So I'm just going to tin. And I just did three different lengths to show you guys what I was talking about earlier. So we got that. Um, so now those are tin. That has solder on each one of those wires. It's hard to see on the little ones. It's probably better on the larger ones to show you. But. Um, as far as the surface goes. And the cool thing about flux, it doesn't matter. Like you can get it, um, you can literally just spread that crap all over the place if you really want to. It's not gonna hurt anything. You can do Q-tip and rubbing alcohol, clean it off, whatever. But that right there, the pads have flux on them. You can go, if you like OCD clean, yeah, you can get it on the one little pad if you want. But at that point, and I always try to make a point of cleaning the iron tip, because when the solder sits on the iron, it tends to oxidize and all that. And you want a nice clean solder joint. So what I do is clean it off and then there you go. There's, there's a tin. I'll show, I'm going to just do a couple of them. What sometimes I see a lot of people do is that when they get the middle one, they uh, yeah. don't Yeah. Now granted with this little stuff, like for example here, this is without any flux on it. It does tin, but when you get to the larger pads, like say like this thing right here, so that has no, no it doesn't flow as well. So that one's starting to flow, but with a little bit of flux on it, I'm kind of jumping around here a little bit, but I'm going to show you a little flux on it. It just kind of flows a little better sometimes. Very cool. So, and again, it depends. I mean, I've seen certain things do better than others. Um, this How do you is, get to be so shiny? Well, that's... So, if you move it, it gets a cold solder joint. The, the si shiny solder joints are not cold solder joints, typically. Okay. So, if it's like a dull... So, okay, so back to what we're going on here. 
Um, if you see, I did one, I don't know how close you can see on here. I did a nice small, short, longer, and then like a really long one. Problem with the really long one is, let's clean that off so you guys can see a little better. If you do a really long one, there's two things that could happen. One, you solder it down. If you do it too shallow, now you got exposed wire that could top, possibly touch something else. I don't like that. So, and then the other thing that could happen is if you solder and say you're like, oh, well, I'm going to make sure I get it really close to it. There. If that one's not as bad, but if it was long as that one, it could have possibly touched the other pad. Mm -hmm. and you got to remember on these flight controllers, you got adjacent pads. And you're not necessarily soldering straight there. You might be soldering on an angle, etc., cetera, um, to get that next wire over there. So the best thing to do is the short, nice and short wire. Like that. So now you have no, you know, you got the silicone jacket all the way up to the edge. You don't have exposed lead like you have on this one here. And then, well, the middle one I didn't do as well as I wanted to explain, but you don't have wire sticking past like, uh, let's do, actually, let's redo the first one. I'll show you what I'm saying. So like if you soldered, and this is something I've seen many, many a times, solder joints like that to where the wire is pretty much to the next pad. Yes. And I've seen that too many times um, in this hobby of guys rushing solder jobs together, and that just happens. Okay. Let's take a look at our friend here. What did he do wrong? Uh, everything. This is actually not the worst example I've seen. Half of this is probably from trying to desolder, but you can see every one of these is cold solder joints. I mean, this guy was not yeah, yeah, flowing the solder very well. Google clean. And it's also, I think this is actually lead-free solder, too, the way it's acting. But... It's cleanable, but you don't want to bridge stuff like that. All right. So but there's a difference in using the right tools and not using the right tools. Right. But uh, yeah, so that's just something different there. But as far as like battery lead stuff, again, this is where, let's just do one of these real quick. I'm going to strip the wire here. Um, I like to take the wire and it's got a natural twist to it because it is braided wire on these. And I like just keeping it nice and clean. Um, in this case, I'm just going to dip it in the flux just to make it quick. And then everyone kind of has a different way of doing this stuff. This is the way I've been doing it for years. I've never had a solder failure, so we're going to keep running it this way. So I like to get solder in there. And well, the surface is not tinned very well anymore, so let's do that. Okay. So, of course, my fat finger is holding that, and that wire just got really hot. So... <laughs> You can see the key is don't let it move until it cures. Because if you do it, let's see, let's try to do a bad solder joint here. If you... Okay, this is what you don't want to do. Well, actually, that cured decently. It's not consistent. It's not straight. But that's not the best thing. You want, you don't want it to be moving. And that's why a lot of people use, like, helping hands, etc. when they're soldering. Um, using a helping hand, holding the two wires together and all that, or the, the board and the wire... Um, is nice because you can hold in position. You don't have to worry about burning your hand because the, the heat does transfer through that silicone. So oh, it yeah. gets pretty toasty. It gets hot. Yep. Um, but stuff like that will help make the solder joint better and stronger typically. Okay. Um, but that's just a little example there of some things you can do with this. I wish I had some surface mount stuff to show you there. Um, I've repaired uh, USB plugs and stuff like that on some of these flight controllers. It's not fun, but... If you have something like this and with the small pads, you might stand a better chance of being able to repair that by getting being able to solder these things. So, what not to do? This is the method I don't like doing. Um, we're going to show you this one is not um, not braided, not twisted. And then I'm just going to now there is rosin core in this, so there is a slight bit of rosin in these things in this uh, wire on this particular brand. There are some that are not. So let's give me get that a little bit longer to there. And then, I don't even, yeah, see, you can see here without the... Yeah, it's starting to spray everywhere. Well, it's not not really flowing to That's it. That's what I see a lot it of takes people a while right there. there, yeah. And the problem with that is you're going to put a lot of current, a lot of heat through that wiring. Um, so let's get here. Let's just stick it there. we got a nice solder pad. Let's see if we can get this thing to flow. So this is what I see a lot of people doing without the flux, is trying to get that sucker to flow. And one thing you'll see 
is the exposed wire underneath pretty much this solder is just bubbled over it it's not really through it it didn't wick into it mm -hmm. um the flux helps the solder wick into the wire and i think it just creates a much better bond and i actually just melt it to this table a little bit yeah. it's bad well that's what happens when you don't use flux you have to use extra heat right yeah yeah we also have another video on soldering that has probably a little more details. Yeah, if you're looking more in the actual process of soldering, see our video, uh, it's linked below, um, that we've done in the past. It's the older version of the diatom this, but this is way better. Has yeah, more this, this is just more modernized. Yeah, all right. There it is, thanks for watching.